This episode of Mobile Geeks is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks, and here we have another segment of travel and tech. Now I'm here in Karisawa, Japan on a vacation, so the kit that I have with me is a little bit different than what I'm usually carrying. So let's find out what's in my bag. So what a better place to unpack my backpack than in Oniyoshi Dash Garden, which is actually a lava or a magna garden. So this actually formed in 1793 and it's very similar to what's going on in Pompeii, Italy. Now I'm going to head into that shade structure because it is 30 degrees and roasting out here. So this is my ASUS backpack. I actually got this from ASUS and it's actually one of 50 in the world. They actually made this Japanese schoolgirl and boy, there's a blue version, uh, for a giveaway and I just lucked out that when I picked up my hot pink pad phone, uh, Seuss decided to give me all of this together because it was just kind of a matching combo. So what's in my bag? Well, this is in my pocket, the pad phone infinity. Um, obviously, I've talked about that in the past. So let's open my bag and see what else I've got. Now, I brought along as well, this is an old netbook cover, also EPC, but I have the pad phone station. So this is used in combination with the phone. So it slides into the back. Uh, I like this combination because when I'm, when I'm traveling and on the plane, it doesn't drain my battery. Um, so we can actually kind of use the tablet and then not worry about the battery of the phone getting drained along the way. And then I only have to prepare uh, one set of gadgets for this, like for all of my information onto one device instead of multiple devices. Now the next thing I've decided to travel with, let's put all this down over here, is the Chromebook. So this is the Chromebook Pixel. Uh, this has the Retina display. Uh, so I've decided to sync all of my Google Drive data with this. So between my phone and my computer, uh, everything is kind of document-wise all synced up. So we're going to get into a little bit more about how I'm using the Chromebook in just a minute when we see what else I've decided to pack in here. Okay, so I have my power bank, 4,500 milliamp pairs. I put some mobile geek stickers on it. And that's just, you know, because you, you, when you're traveling, you just need to have all that extra juice around. Now, what else is in here? And then this is another really interesting one. We'll get into this a little bit later, but this is actually an NFC uh, headset. So I pair this with my phone, and it, then it's Bluetooth uh, for transmitting the music or whatever I'm listening to. So we're going to get into a little bit of a review of that a little bit later. Now, what else is in here? The power bank. Anything else in the front? No, just some money and some lip balm. So that's it for what's in my backpack. Now, let's find out a little bit more about the Chromebook. So now the Chromebook can be used offline. You just need to take the time to set it up before you leave. So all of this should be done while you're online. You need to download the Gmail offline app. Now to do that easily, I'll just take you through all of the steps right now. So log into your email while online. Go into the settings button over here. Go into settings. Then go over here to the offline tab and then launch Gmail offline. Now if you haven't already launched it, it will actually take you to the store to download it. Now the next thing that you should do is you should actually open your Google Drive. And then what you should do is go into more and then hit offline. Now I've set up everything to be available offline, but if you wanted to just choose a couple, you can do that too. So now the next thing that I think it's really great to have available is Google Docs because you can make documents while you're offline, which is very, very handy. So just make sure that you've downloaded that app as well. The first one I'm going to look at is read it for later. So let's say I'm going to go to any website. You can actually choose to archive it so it's available later. If you're visiting Japan, one of the things that you should definitely try to hit up is a little bit of arts and culture. You can see this museum that I'm standing in is positively stunning. It's by architect Ryuye Nishizawa, and there's uh, some really amazing installations in here. So while we're on the topic of arts and culture, I'm going to enlighten you a little bit about what's happening in the Japanese mobile culture scene, I guess. Uh, Sony is kind of making a comeback right now with their Xperia Z Ultra, their huge 6.4 inch phablet. But one of the problems that Sony is experiencing here 
in Japan is that the carriers want an incredibly high turnover in their smartphones. So they're kind of a, almost a seasonal buyer. When Japanese look at phones, they kind of want to pick one up every season. And the three major carriers all kind of market towards this. So whenever a new phone comes out, you're going to see it. In that season, then the next season, there's going to be a new one. So there was a time where you couldn't get a phone without a digital TV recorder. There was a time where you couldn't get one without a fingerprint scanner. So all of these things come in and out of fashion. So when you look at Sony and their new mobile strategy, you kind of have to wonder how they're going to approach a market that wants a new phone every four months. So the other thing that's very popular here in Kurisawa is curling. If you remember back in 1998, uh, Nagano did have the Winter Olympic Games. And so in the summertime, if you're looking for a reprieve from the heat, which actually you probably shouldn't because the reason why everyone comes here in Japan during the summer is because it's way cooler than everywhere else. But if you still need to, you know, cool down, you can obviously come curling. I've decided to do that and I've performed terribly. And the reason that is, is they won't let me drink on the ice. I'm pretty sure in Canada, it's a rule that you have to drink while curling. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's in the rule of curling. The Japanese just aren't paying attention. Now before we find out exactly how I gave up my pen and paper on this trip, why don't we hear from our sponsor. If you spend any time traveling for business, you know how much more you get done than when the entire team is working together. If you haven't already checked out GoToMeeting with HD Faces, you really should. Share the same screen so you all stay on the same page. The built-in HD video conferencing makes it feel like everybody is in the same room. Launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, smartphone, or tablet. And if you, and if you have an iPad, you can even present directly from that. Visit GoToMeeting. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotomeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code GEEKS. Now remember to use the promo code GEEKS to support our show. Now let's head back to Kurosawa. Here I am at Megane Bridge, or Glasses Bridge, and I'm gonna take a closer look at the Padphone Infinity and the station. Now I wish I could say that my trip over here was all fun and games, but I did have a few meetings to take, and I found myself using the station for presentations, and I refused to carry around a pen and paper, which was a big thing for me, so I took a deep dive into Supernote. So I'm gonna show you how I've been using it. So one of the things that I like to do was when I was at a location, I could take a photo of something and then make some notes. So I could kind of remember what was going on, uh, just to give you a little bit of a run through on how this works. So you can select from a photo. Let's go back here. So let's maybe choose, yeah, I had such a great time. So here was me curling, so you can say done. You can put in a title, so you can decide to write, type, or draw. Uh, one of the things that I do like about, say, the draw is you can choose this transform. So if I decided to do a circle, it'll make it much fancier for me. Eraser, you can choose different sizes. Uh, that'll erase all the drawings on the page. Uh, what I like is that you can insert photo, picture, file, text, PDF, audio recording. Uh, sometimes when I'm quite busy at a location, I just want to quickly say what I need to remember, and I can record that directly into the note. But there are quite a few other templates that you can choose from. So if you just head in here, you can add a new notebook. So you can have to-do lists, uh, different types of papers for drawing, and there's even pad versus phone, so it'll widen or make the uh, note a little more vertical. So let's say if we flip this into phone mode. So it is quite different. Now, using this in phone mode, I find it to be a little bit small, but why don't we just say, and it actually moves over so you can kind of keep on writing even if you run out of room on the page for longer words. So there really is a lot going on with Supernote and I definitely did manage to replace my pen and paper on this trip with it. So if you're a fan at all of the Beatles, you'll know that John Lennon obviously married Yoko Ono. And they came to Japan to vacation quite often and Karisawa was one of the places where they 
frequented every summer because it's a lot cooler than Tokyo. So this cafe over here was actually a favorite of John's to come and you know spend some time and hang out. And they used to stay here at the Mape Hotel uh, every summer for many, many years. So I'm about to get on the plane to head back to Taiwan and the final thing that I have to talk about are these Bluetooth Sony headsets. Now I really liked it, it was kind of a cool concept, but the problem is if I'm going to have a Bluetooth headset, and I love that this pairs with the NFC, way to go Sony, but where am I going to clip it? I mean to be honest with you, like I, the, the cord's not long enough to have it on my pocket, right, and my phone would actually reach just the same. So I'm actually not sold on this, maybe in the winter time when you can clip it to the outside of a jacket, but in the summertime, this is not the ideal gadget for me. So this was a disappointment for me and my uh, traveling to Japan. So this has been another episode of Travel and Tech. I'm your host, Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks. Yeah.